fucking show you how the fucking moon landing was fucking bullshit because everyone's you telling you that was fucking wrong. Showed me. Yeah. So fucking explain to me. Here you go. The guy's getting off the rocket ship. Who the fuck is filming him? Who's filming him? A guy. How'd the fucking guy get up there if this is the first guy that's supposed to be on the fucking moon? A different rocket ship? I don't know. So they sent the rocket shit up there. He got off and he's like, all right, come on up now. I'm ready to fucking film. Where's Are the, you where's fucking the serious? Same rocket ship? He's supposed to be the first guy on the moon. It's bullshit. The car. How the fuck did the car fit in that rocket ship? Look, how did that car fit in the rocket ship? I don't know. Okay, right. More bullshit. Then the guy's floating around with a big fucking cord to his stomach and they're telling you that's his fucking, oh, life support. What's it give? Was it fucking feeding him through the fucking tube like a baby? They fucking, they're bouncing around like a fucking jerk off. Yeah, watch. Let me show you. There it goes. Bye bye. You know what? I'm going to stay behind. You guys go back to Earth. I'll fucking die up here. And how the f*** did he get the film back to Earth? Yeah, look, the fake f***ing parachute. Hey, we're home now. What happened to the guy back on the moon? They just left him? I, I guess they, so. Yeah, everyone guesses they don't have any f***ing facts. Bullshit. I just see it uh, as a beginning. Uh, not just this flight, but in this program, which has really been a very short piece of human history, an instant in history, the entire program, it's uh, a beginning of a new age. Now we have a number one rocket right now in the U.S., and we have a number one spacecraft, and they cannot get into lunar orbit with significant maneuvering capability. And that's a great disappointment to me. How do you feel about that, Jim? We're working on it, as a matter of fact. Um, so the Orion crew capsule is an amazing crew capsule, and we need it to go to the moon uh, within five years, which, of course, is the direction that we're on right now. Um, but when we're there, I think the gateway, it's going to attach to a small module in orbit around the moon called the gateway. Think of it as a small space station. Yeah. And that's going to give us what we call Delta V. That's that maneuvering capability to go down to low lunar orbit and then back up on a lander. And so those are the, those are the pieces of the architecture that we're working on. Well, I'd like to have you also listen to the other side because some people would like to do it a different way. Yes, sir. All right, so you'll listen to Buzz and some of the other people, because they also feel, I, I mean, I know this has been going on for a little while. I remember very clearly, I think anybody who was alive at the time does, I remember my parents waking me up and we went down and we watched you guys land on the moon, no, which was... No, you didn't. What? Because um, uh, there wasn't any television, there wasn't anybody taking a picture. You watched animation. Tonight, Gotham's relying on one man to save us all. Wow, Neil Armstrong. Hey, wait a minute. You're supposed to be on the moon. I just saw it on TV. Oh, there's a, 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 a tape delay and uh, with all the uh, solar winds. You associated what you saw with... I have very hazy memories. Oh, I know. Oh. Well, well, no, but what we saw was we all, we all were gathered around you the heard, old curved you top heard radio me and listened. talking about... Uh, you know, how many feet we were going to the left and right, and then I said, contact light, engine stop. It was and exciting. A few other things, and then Neil said, Houston, Tranquility Base, the Eagle has landed. Man, how about that? That, that was that, very exciting. Not a bad line. Yeah, the International yeah. Space Crew attempted a spacewalk outside the station. Here's a live look at the astronauts. Well, I don't believe, I, I don't believe that. Yeah. Two, one, ignition. Right away, Houston. Bags are good. Bags hot. Get the order. order. No way. <gasps> That's great. We landed on the moon. I need y'all to look how they put the truth in plain sight. This is in Vegas, right? Now, peep. That's an AI bot. In the dome glass. Look. Look at the look at the the mitt. Like it's surprise. Like. I don't think y'all understand, yo. What did you just see, bro? This whole thing was about transcending beyond the firmament, yo, and turning everybody different, yo. 
on everything. And this was inside of Vegas. And then when you seen like when he broke the glass or it broke the glass and it was looking like real surprised. This part right here, look. Watch this shit, y'all. Look, look at look at the surprise on the face. You see that, right? Even to me, this is a little subliminal. Afterlife, Genesis. Like that was a new beginning and some shit. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Wait up! So apparently they found city lights on another planet. I don't know what's faker, this or Kim Kardashian's. Look, man, I'm all for, oh, we discovered this and that. But come on. Come on. Be, be, be serious. There is no way <laughs> that we saw city lights on another planet. Come on, brother. This sounds like something out of a movie. And I'm not, like, knocking the discovery of more, you know, things in the universe. I'm all for that. But, like, at least try to make it sound real. City lights? City lights? City lights? So you're making the claim that this planet has cities and that these are city lights. Not just light. It's city lights. Shut the f Is it me or is it really weird to see a UNICEF sticker on the International Space Center? What is UNICEF got to do with space? There you have it. Cool, but difficult thought process. Right. I mean, that's that's essentially what's happening when you're on a plane. I mean, if you're throwing a ball up in the air and catching it on the plane, it's happening on a much smaller scale, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're flying at whatever, 600 miles an hour relative to yeah. the ground. But it doesn't but seem like it when you're sitting there. Yeah. And Einstein elevated that to a principle and said, if you're moving at, abuse, if you're not accelerating, you're just moving at a constant speed in a plane or now. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing now. We're moving around the sun at effectively constant speed. Then you can't tell. So there's no experiment you can do. We could look at the decay of a radioactive nucleus or some electricity and magnetism or bounce a ball, have a pendulum, whatever it is. And there's no experiment you can do to tell you whether you're moving or not. Therefore, that concept has no meaning because you can't measure it. And that, well, led, that's led Einstein to relativity. Guys, the seven planets are not physical objects. Now I'm going to show you what NASA shows us versus what a real camera, a Nikon P900, which is the most powerful zoom camera in the world, actually shows us. Oh, here is NASA's CGI version of Mars. Here is what Mars actually looks like. So guys, these planets are luminaries. They are lights in the sky. They are the only wandering stars. Also, how is it when you point a camera at the North Star which is Polaris, all the stars around it do perfect circles 365 days of the year. Also, the constellations realign in the same exact spot 365 days, which means we are absolutely not doing this, hurtling through space at millions of miles per hour, orbiting the sun and spinning a thousand miles per hour. Like how would we see the same exact constellations align in the same exact spot every 365 days not possible if we were doing this so check this out this is the planet venus or a luminary a light in the firmament traced over an eight period time and this is the pattern it creates guys none of this would be possible on the model that nasa is feeding us so guys, this is what our planets or wandering stars actually look like and not this fake CGI cartoons that NASA feeds us. So the Earth is a stationary plane with the stars fixated in the firmament. The stars are moving and we are stationary just like the Bible said and just like all of our ancient ancestors tried to tell us. Here's NASA. A modern formulation by Max Tegmark, who called it the mathematical universe hypothesis. Tegmark's hypothesis is actually more, shall we say, grandiose. He doesn't just claim that actually reality is math, but that all math is real. 
not just the math that we use in our theories that describes our observations, but all of it. The exponential function, Mandelbrot sets, the number 18, it's all as real as you and I. If you believe, tech mark. But should you believe tech mark? Well, as we have seen earlier, the justification that we have for calling some mathematical structures real is that they describe what we observe. This means we have no rationale for talking about the reality of mathematics that does not describe what we observe. Therefore, the mathematical universe hypothesis isn't scientific. This is generally the case for all types of the multiverse. The physicists who believe in this argue that unobservable universes are real because they are in their math. But just because you have math for something doesn't mean it's real. You can just assume it's real, but this is unnecessary to describe what we observe and therefore unscientific. Let me be clear that this doesn't mean it's wrong. It isn't wrong to say the exponential function exists or there are infinitely many other universes that we can't see. It's just that this is a belief-based statement, not supported by evidence. What's wrong is to claim that science says so. Then what about the question whether we are made of math? Well, you can't falsify this hypothesis. Suppose you had an observation that you can't describe by math. It could always be that you just haven't found the right math. So the idea that we're made of math is also not wrong, but unscientific. You can believe in it if you want. There's no evidence for or against it. Not trying to be smart or anything, but I would like NASA to explain these photos to me. Come on, NASA, explain this. Alexa, how fast is the Earth moving? The Earth rotates once in about 24 hours with respect to the Sun. Its rotation speed at the equator is just over 1,000 miles per hour. Alexa, why does the Earth not move when you hover in a helicopter? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, due to a combination of gravity and atmosphere, we cannot feel the Earth spinning. Alexa, are the clouds part of the atmosphere? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, Yes. In meteorology, a cloud is an aerosol consisting of a visible mass of miniature liquid droplets. Alexa, if the Earth and clouds all move together, why do I see the clouds move but not the Earth? The Earth and clouds move together due to the movement of air and wind currents, causing the clouds to appear stationary. For Alexa, the Earth looks stationary, so why is it moving? From our perspective on Earth, it may seem like the planet is stationary, but that's because we're stationary with respect to the Earth. Alexa, can you give me an example of Occam's razor? From Genius.com Occam's razor example, if given the choice between two solutions, the one that is simpler to understand is most likely the right answer. Alexa, why does the Earth not move when you hover in a helicopter? When a helicopter hovers in the air, it is because the air moving past the helicopter is at the same speed as the Earth's rotation. This means that the helicopter and the air do not move, so the Earth does not appear to move relative to the helicopter. Occam's razor, of course. Or maybe, just maybe, nothing's moving at all. Just your imagination. So, you want to talk about the moon, do ya? Alright, let's do that. As we all know, the moon is the celestial object we see in our night sky. We sometimes see it during the day. It is often out with the sun. And when the moon is out with the sun, you'd get no effect on the gravity. No change in tides, no change in your weight. Even though the sun and the moon allegedly are acting on you, because the sun is holding the earth in place, but it's not pulling you, a lighter object, up to it because gravity is very selective. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the laser bounce experiment. Many of you believe this experiment is only possible because of a reflective mirror, but that's because many of you don't understand they've been bouncing a laser off the moon for a long time. Many years before the moon landing, when you look it up, you see that the speed of light is what they determine the distance of the moon by. But what they do not tell you about that is that that entire experiment relies on the theory of relativity. 
That's right. The moon laser experiment completely relies on the fact that we are contracting and dilating in space. It does this because the moon is also allegedly moving very fast through space in multiple directions at the same exact time because that's possible. Did you know it is physically impossible to measure the speed of light in one given direction? Yep, you heard me right. It's impossible. But somehow you guys use it to calculate the distance of the moon. And you do it with such confidence that you likely do not even know that your theory is physically impossible. It's just a theory. And that theory relies on another theory. There is literally no facts to this argument. None. And yet somehow you guys use it to prove the distance of the moon. All while asking silly questions about the flat earth that keep you from uh, finding the truth. You don't ask questions like this. Not sure if you're even capable of devising a question like this. But nevertheless, you do not ask him. Nope, instead you ask stuff like, where's the wall? How do we not fall off of a flat earth, you say? While completely avoiding the fact that on a globe you are upside down. Water is upside down. And with all of this upside down, nothing falls. Nothing is lighter. Nothing changes its mass. So many questions on the globe. And you guys ask silly questions like, where's the wall? It came in the mail and y'all are opening it with me. <laughs> Ooh. The flat earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri, from Russia, with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle, and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tuzzi, a professional mapmaker came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.